we used the power of our body to bust open the door to what appears to be a haunted gym. I get, we're gonna find out what's in this what's in this haunted gym. We're gonna find out what this whole curse is about. We're gonna crack this case wide open. What do you think about that, Kim? What is this place? The lieutenant stares at the dusty training equipment. It's like a little text issue right there. It's an adventure. No, it's a gym. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. An airy feeling rises in your chest. Yeah, we actually we haven't actually used that flashlight at all, have we? What if there's a reason why no one's been here in ages? Yes, because it's closed. No need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? No, no, let's not move on. Okay, I guess we're moving on. Okay, <clears throat> get our flashlight. There we go. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. The poster says Sitius Fortis, the rest is worn off. Worn out wall bars, they look unsafe. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. This is physical instruments time. Why does it feel so familiar? Wow, legendary. But we have a negative one because of head hurts, but we are wearing the weightlifting gloves. Why is this familiar? Is it because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. We're still young and fit, Endurance. Let's, let's, let's prove it to Endurance right now. You manage to hoist it off the ground, but the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Your hands slick with sweat. Turns out you're no beast, just an old man with bad form. See? See? This place is cursed. That, that, yes, that's right, Inland Empire. That's the problem. Fuck you, you stupid barbell. Weightlifting was never my favorite either. The lieutenant is obviously handling you. At the station gym, I mean. I prefer running. It clears your head. The lieutenant steps away from the barbell, letting you recover in peace. Okay, well, not, a, not only did we lose some health, we lost yet another morale point. Happens a lot. Well, looks. I guess we can try that again later. I don't know why we'd want to, but... It says we can. Oh, not, that's the door. There's something else there. It's a shot putt ball. A ball used for playing shot putt, a favorite pastime of elderly gentlemen. It is it? You feel like you should hold on to this and make good use of it. To sell such beautiful old school sports equipment would be a sin. I have never actually seen anyone do a shot putt in real life outside of the uh, environment of like a like a track meet. Um, I have not seen elderly gentlemen engage in that. Okay, I guess uh, there's nothing else. Let's see up here. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. There's a good deal more space behind here. A large demijohn full of strange liquid, and that's a word I have never seen before. 
Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Airship rotors covered in spider webs, they remind you of blades. A naked mannequin torso, a strange yellow color. Ooh, real. That's like the most real we found in one place so far. Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. The radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. You sound surprised and a bit cautious. Do you think I should turn it on? We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Well, time it's no time like the present to learn. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside that compartment. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go. Lieutenant notes observing the machine. Well, without the memory, will it actually do anything? Let's press play. Nothing happens. Press print? Nothing happens. Press play again? Nothing happens. No, it's missing uh, the memory. Maybe if we find some, we can use this for something. But that time is not now, I guess. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Let's inspect these drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins, casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins, with organs shining under their skin. And even ether welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? No, yeah, I mean, it's... It just seems like an elf. I don't know if it has to come from a tortured, feverish mind. One of the Welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Let, this is important. Let us examine it. It's Vara Hamira, a high Welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. I can't even imagine a world like that. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. One of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Lieutenant nods at the Welkin's facial hair. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. But why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Well, this has been educational. I guess let's move on from the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. And for what? All gone. Yeah, so much creativity, so much effort expended to try to make something real. All failed. All failure. Inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. Albeit dark and cold, 
This vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. Hmm, it's sort of like drugs, but not the kind of drugs you inject or snort, the kind of drugs that you take in through your eyes. And not the way that one person did, injecting cocaine in his eyes, but rather looking at something. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Let's look at the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Oh, so whoever was here was just doing this only last year? Not some sort of ancient, um, cursed area. It's just someone was making their own RPG here just last year. So much pain. Back pain. Neck pain. Headaches. Carpal tunnel, chest pain. No gym membership can make up for working in this manner. What happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. Let's inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. Well, we were told that a number of businesses have gone bankrupt that have worked in this building. I guess this is just one of them. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, UKV 123.7, UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Of course. The anatomy of the curse. Perhaps. The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. Hmm, the Game Master Frequency. Looks like a surveillance program. Wait, who's the Game Master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. All of this is gone, left unrealized. My god, it's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Why do you say that? The schedule. I know Doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Hmm. So they were failing and losing money. Only The only antidote to, antidote to that is to just keep going bigger and bigger. It'll all work out in the end. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Um... Seems like it was just a failed business. Yes, that is the question. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks, as a compliment. How were they planning to do that? Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. 
Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. I don't know if Kim's into RPGs or if he's just admiring the ambition of it. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an interisolary game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with heat death thrown in. And what do you think happened to this company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... Lieutenant tilts his head, thinking... The curse got him. I see no other explanation. Ah, yes. The doom of bad business practices. The lieutenant looks around the derelict room. The pipes howl and a rat crosses the floor. Okay, let's keep moving. <laughs> Scribbled across a notebook, developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Yeah, I mean, from what we've uh, been reading, it sounds like it probably would have been. Oh, some more real. We're just getting there. We almost have enough to pay rent tonight. Skis with slipstream printed on the laminated top layer. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream. Lo Maybe we should take those skis. Could probably pawn them. Take a. Uh, Production schedule filament mem memory. The cube like crisscross of filaments feels oddly fragile in our hand. Its intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads production schedule. Note this filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. All right, well, I guess this goes in the computer. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Insert the production schedule. Like a smooth draw, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Press play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Oh no. It was already glowing, and now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien CO-like technology. Oh, Half-Flight is scared of this alien technology. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall, until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Fortress accident en rue de Saint-Gislain. This is East Insulindian Repeater Station, huh? Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? What are you, a machine? Or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Now please repeat. Is this the production schedule? She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Yvonne, my partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid? They are merely cautious. It's my job to protect their filaments as a password repeater at the East Insulindian station. Alright, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian repeater station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. On an island on the River Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. 
Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Doesn't it get lonely sitting there all by herself? Doesn't it get lonely doing this job? Lonely? <laughs> Why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. That's why she does this. Now please tell me the reason for your call, Fortress Accident. Why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any, any more information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's what the catalog says. And what's that, this interactive call-in radio game? Any other questions? You hear her ask when the connection finally improves. Well, I guess we won't know. Or maybe she would not have known herself. She's just reading what the catalog says. What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. You mean that glowing thing I put inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? I don't know? Uh, if you are unsure, could you please take a look? How do I do that? Open the hatch on the compartment. Don't touch the wires. A current is running through it, but the core is safe. There's a filament inside. I need to know what it's called. It's called the production schedule. Good. Please repeat the password. I is it my birthday? No. I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? Still no. Uh, I guess we're not going to do any social engineering to this woman. This is the police. Please open the thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for press accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? The voice in the machine asks again. She, she sounds cold in the damp air. I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. I mean, it sounds bad, but no, it's, it's a completely legitimate uh, operation, half light. Don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. You know, I mean... If this is anything like any of my co-workers, I sh we should probably find, like, a sticky piece of paper somewhere on the computer with it written down. We just haven't looked hard enough. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Uh, that's all for now, I guess. Thank you, and goodbye. The old lady's voice disappears along with the static. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Uh, I guess we'll take it with us. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. It says it's worth money, but we probably shouldn't sell it until we find out what's on it. Oh, what's this? Oh yeah, jamais vu. Jamais vu. Derealization. Jamais vu. The opposite of déjà vu. Not already seen, but never seen everything that should be familiar appears strange and new like some half forgotten day in your childhood only now that's the feeling you've been having and for who knows how long you should go and ask joyce messier about this what world are we in this is a fundamental question wow plus one xp for every orb clicked and then intellect learning caps raised by one um well, I mean, I guess if you were min-maxing the game, you probably would have gone to Joyce immediately to get this thought and then not click on any orbs un until you actually internalized it. All right, so I think that we have now looked at everything in this little room. There is a door, I think, but let's just make sure that there was nothing else. 
It doesn't seem like there is. All right, let's see if this door leads anywhere. Oh, some more real. And magnesium, which is something I really need because I've been using so many of them to heal my hurt feelings. You see a terrifying ice beer with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the beer's eyes are glowing red. This ice beer is a hyper carnivore. Be careful. What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the beer regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim. It's just a fridge. Of course. Just a giant ice bear shaped fridge. He relaxes his hand, his face bathed in the harsh light of the open fridge door. Let's take a look inside. Let's look inside the refrigerator. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Let's take the note. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Hey, yeah, you never know when that might come in useful. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in the light. Somewhere in the past, it's summer. Five-year-old Fifette lets go of her mother's hand, change jingling in her pockets as she hops towards the ice cream stand right across the plaza. So they tried to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore? I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The lieutenant points at the red snaky cable running from the fridge. Yeah, it's true. This fridge is still on. Someone's paying for the electricity to keep this fridge powered up. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Close the door. Well, maybe this is the source of the curse. We don't know. Wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Well, obviously we have to kick it. A hollow ring echoes through the furnace. Your toe hurts. We got both plus and minus health from that. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Look inside the furnace. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. Is coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. What are you doing? I hear the murderer of the hanged man talking. Wait, really? We should investigate, see if someone's upstairs. Smear our hands with coal. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karzai, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. 
Well, we are at war with, uh, crime? Hadramit Karzai, let us apply our war paint. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling stories of your wild soul. What? What are you doing? I am the reincarnation of an ancient Ilmarian warrior. Please wipe your face clean, officer. <laughs> That's a pretty good chance of succeeding. You can feel your cheeks turn red under the lieutenant's gaze. You look like a kid, not a police officer. Even the war paint can't conceal the embarrassment. Okay, let's wipe it clean. Thank you. So, where were we? I was hoping that it would be reflected on our portrait down there. I don't think it changed, though. An ice cream maker. Defrosted and, un and unplugged. The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. Oh, we got a skill point. Um, we don't have any new thoughts to internalize, but we might want to unlock another slot. By the way, what is this? Uh... Yeah, oh yeah, we didn't look at this. A handwritten note we found from the giant ice bear fridge. It still bears some marks from the fruit-shaped kitchen magnets that were used to secure to the refrigerator door. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? The lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over our shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Let's read the note. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. I wonder who that kid might be. You find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswaf. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I think we just passed it. I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Mm hmm Who do you think the illiterate ginger kid is? Really? You don't have a single guess? You don't mean Kuno, do you? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. Remind me again, what's a filament memory? It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. I wonder who wrote that note? Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Maybe it's because of... the entity. That's implausible. Hope we find out that there is an entity, just so we can prove it to, to Kim. <laughs> Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Well, there's look, there's a hole in the wall, and we can we have a flashlight. We can shine that on the hidden compartment. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Absolutely. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spiderwebs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim? Are these any good? Let's inspect them. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt-action model with a fine woodstock, in better cosmetic order than the others. Take it. You're a police officer. Police officers carry guns. They do carry guns, and we don't have one. Let's take it. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. 
Could the murder weapon we're looking for be similar? It's the same type of weapon, yes, a breech loader. An interesting coincidence that we should find something so similar. But I'm afraid our search for the real murder weapon must continue. But what does this mean? A rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Where are we right now? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Frozen ice cream, cream maker that's still running. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Oof. Wow. Oh, we need the, the pry bar. Pry bar is not strong enough. Okay, so we need a better tool. Let's turn the ice cream crank. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. Oh no, my dream, my childhood dreams of becoming an entrepreneur dashed to the winds. What better to assuage the creeping sense of failure than some frozen fat and sugar? Yeah. That's what that's ice cream is our true friend. We needed to forget about our troubles. All right. So, I guess we need a better tool. Um no point in even trying this right now. Oh. We have over 20 real. This is this is not a drill. This is not a test. We actually have enough money to pay rent. We did it. We did it, finally. And Kim did not even need to pawn anything for us. Broken Bell McGray from Ages Past. Four shot, bolt action, military rifle, wooden frame. Only 390? Come on. Come on now. This is an antique. Surely in the hands of the right collector, they would pay money for this. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice beer fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Well, I mean, I guess we don't... The, the fridge doesn't need to be on right now, does it? An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. We can unplug the ice cream maker cable. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? I don't know. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. I don't suppose that changes this any. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. Yeah, it's plus two because it's unplugged. Still only 3%. Like, those advantages, ha having done that and the gloves, barely making a dent. We just need to find a better tool, that's all. Intercom wires running into the breaker box. Oh. Insane mesh tank top. Well, the current shirt increases our physical ability. So I don't know, but let's see what this has to offer. Where did you even get that one? No, really, who put it in that drawer? No further comments. Wear it at your own risk. Plus one to drama. Well, drama is quite low. Something's giving us a negative one drama. The shades? Yeah, because we got plus one vi visual calculus. So we can... The, what we're currently wearing gives us plus one physical instrument, which is good. But we could just wear this for right now. Our mesh tank top. Why not? Just if we need to do a physical instrument check, we can remember to replace our shirt. 
And of course, we've got some stairs going up to somewhere. There's a lot to explore behind this door. Oh, and that takes us out here. So that's open now. And we can just go in and out as we as we please. Alright, so we have to open up this ice cream maker in order to get the um the memory inside. There's also let me look at this again. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace. Coloring it pitch black. We heard voices above it, so we should probably see if we can find that. I also don't know if there's a reason to kick it. Like, we lost health by doing that. Don't know if there would ever actually be a reason that we would want to do it. Just having a look around, just to check to see if there are any more glowies. An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. Let's knock on it. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Well, the only thing to do is to just do the same thing, but harder. Still nothing. No one's home. In cases like this, you just have to keep doing it harder. Those curtains prove to be surprisingly sturdy. Your fist hurts now. There must be another way to wake up whoever is in there. Maybe we should ask the lady in the bookstore what's going on here. Hmm. Well, I would prefer to just keep hitting it as hard as we can, but... Shoes of puddle. Shoes in a puddle of melting snow. A postcard, okay. Some more money for us to, to, uh, to get if we sell this. The sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia-toned. Midtown traffic pause it passes. Overhead, the ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into a beige midday mist. Vapor rising from the delta on which the district was built. The postcard is prepaid. All right, we'll get one real by selling that. We already tried to pick this up. Did not work so well. Maybe we can try it again later. energy leeching onto my shop sometimes it's necessary to resort to extreme measures i suppose it's all over now her shoulders There's no escape her shoulders slump as if a heavy burden lies on them well i've looked around i can tell you what i saw okay i'm willing to listen we are set on the path there's little else to do. She shrugs, apparently dejected. But before we go on, did you encounter the malignant entity? Her eyes narrow as she whispers the name. Of course, the entity. I didn't see her, but I sensed her presence. You did? 
then it has to be true. I've suspected that this woman-shaped energy must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you see that she lives inside the chimney? You mean the chimney that's part of the central furnace? I heard voices coming from there. Yes, I've heard that. It's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains upstairs. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. And do return to me after you've talked to it. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. If you're really interested in cracking this mystery, then we should go back to the furnace. Maybe you could yell into it or something. Make some noise. You'll think of something you always do. Despite his call, the lieutenant's interested in solving this mystery too. Good idea, Kim. Let's go back to that furnace and scream into it. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. I mean, those are high odds, but we could make those odds even better. A thick layer of cold dust covers... Percentage is the same, but hey. Pitch black. Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Hello? You hear a woman's voice answer. You've awakened the entity. I summon the ghost of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit! Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come upstairs. There's a safety curtain on the second floor. I'll open it. You hear a low rumble upstairs, the sound of a curtain being pulled aside. After you, officer. Great. Gonna crack this... Oh, wait, no, it's uh, this way, isn't it? Gonna crack this ghost mystery wide open. No, that was the that was the pathway leading out. Oh, there's an orb down there. A cellar window, people's feet shuffling by on the street. And there's something here. Even more real. We have 20.59 real. We are rolling in the real now. We could buy so much stuff as long as it costs 0.59 real. As long as it only costs that much, we could buy we could buy something. Okay. Hello. This tray is full of dice. Colorful polyhedral dice. Hundreds of them. The candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice! It's now a dice dispenser! Okay, okay time to come face-to-face -face with the entity. 
Hello, I'm Nia. A bird-like woman sits on a throne of tools with emerald light shining through her hair. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my Milius. She taps on her headphones. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. Yeah, we'll unmask her when the time is right. What do you mean by milieus? Yes, a milieu is like a call-in station. You need a two-way radio to access one. That's why I have these. She pats the headphones on the table. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed, I must have missed you knocking. You may have you confused with someone else. I haven't knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? As she speaks, her bone-like fingers fiddle with a ring. Her bones light, but her hands strong. Role-playing games? You know the one made by Fortress Accident. Does that count? Wow, Encyclopedia actually succeeded at a role. Uh, sure, I like role-playing games and I need some dice. Very good. My rate is 10 real per set, unless you want something really unusual. Take a look around and see if there is any particular stone you want to use. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. How did you become a dice maker? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field with too much competition. She doesn't let it show, but there's anger in there. She doesn't like jewelers, thinks they're a mob. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Do you like role playing games yourself? Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay. And role players as customers? They're nice people. She's thankful for the security they provide her. Well, what do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? Nothing really. I didn't know him. Who cares about the dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. I agree, Inland Empire. The lieutenant looks at his notebook, then the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It shuts out most of the daily ruckus behind my window. What do you mean by the daily ruckus? Well, there's always something going on in the whirling's backyard. She stops to try and come up with an example. During daytime, there are usually those kids. And lately, I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. You never took your eyes off your work to look out the window? I might have, but in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. Do you often work Sunday nights? It's an odd profession, making dice for people. But I like it, and I prefer doing this to sitting at home. I see. Thank you for your answers. She nods. Anything else, officer? Where are we anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. 
Plaisance was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Well, yes, technically. This, yes, there is an entity living here. Creative. I've heard this place is cursed. Do you know people call it the doomed commercial area? I've heard the stories, but I don't think those stories are true. Hmm. Plaisance is the one who sent me. She's convinced that the place is swarming with malicious energies. Plaisance, the bookshop lady? I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? Actually, the bookstore isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers, and she has to exploit her own daughter to keep the company going. All oh, right. But it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling in racks? Some people say it's part of the building complex. No, the whirling isn't doing well either. The waitress took off and the customers are having trouble paying bills. All of them. All of the customers are, for some reason, can't pay their bills. It must be a curse. And then there is me. <sighs> She sighs, looking at the messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there scattered, from knives to carving files to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? It's because she's in cahoots with the demons. That's exactly what I was thinking, Half-Light. Plaisance thinks it's because you're the source of it. A malignant entity. Malignant entity? What does that even mean? <laughs> Some kind of sorceress? What about you, officer? Do you think I'm the malignant entity? The jig is up. The she-demon knows you've uncovered her true identity. Alright, things might get dangerous if the she-demon knows. Time has come to face the source. Fear not, for the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. I still think it might be you that's causing this. Narrow our eyes very mysteriously. <laughs> so I'm the Grand Dragon in the cave. Might I ask what supports this claim? Well, I yelled to summon the ghost of the Doom commercial area and you answered, so... Oh my... I've revealed myself. Exactly. You better call the exorcists. I don't have to call anyone. I am a ghost whisperer myself. Of course. How convenient. Well, if you ever find a way to explain all those inconsistencies in the curse, then let me know. She turns back to her work. Plaisance needs to hear about this. Perhaps if you combine your psychic energies you will make sense of the situation. That is a high. That's pretty high. Um, let's first ask about this. Do you know what happened to the other tenants? Everyone else is gone. More or less. Are you interested in anyone specific? Rats scuttle in the dark rooms under the abandoned blow dryers and dusty mannequins. Cobwebs cover rotors and radio computers alike. So much failure. There used to be a hair salon here, right? Yes, I think it was called Androgynous Orlando or something similar. They weren't a big hit around here. Turns out that working class men don't like genderless haircuts. They're scared of that word. Oh, that's strange. Like the Hardy Boys seem like they would be like, big customers there. Like they seem like they would be all into that. You wouldn't like it either. The others would laugh at you. Well, physical instrument, everyone has been laughing at me this whole time. That's just something that we have to absorb into us. What's wrong with a bit of experimenting? The customer should be more open-minded. I guess it just wasn't the time yet. She tucks a strand of hair under the headscarf. What happened to the gym? It wasn't merely a gym. It was Artemitep's boxing club. A community project created to steer at-risk use away from drugs and crime. Maybe that's what Kuno needs, a community-centric boxing club. Hmm, Kuno. Who's Kuno? He's a little ginger gremlin who likes to defile dead bodies. Oh yes, 
You mean the kid with the sailor's mouth? Yes, I've heard him yelling profanities in the backyard. She looks out the window. It's oddly quiet there at the moment. I think it would take more than a gym to help that kid. Yeah, there's. it's going to take a lot. Who was Armitep? A kind man from Zemsk. I heard he had some trouble with the law when he was younger, and that's why he wanted to start the gym, as his way of giving back. How did that project work out? It didn't. If anything, it made the youth situation in Martinez even worse. At some point, someone started a rumor that the punching bag downstairs was full of amphetamines. Electrochemistry, do you have something to say? You should have known it. Mm hmm Eventually, the coalition took away the funding and the club went bankrupt. This was a few years ago. It's gotten much more peaceful around the plaza ever since. What's up with the broken windows? Oh, this one's a mess. <sighs> there used to be a company that promised to repair windows 24 hours a day. What could go wrong with this one, right? Turns out the business was actually set up as a front for an illicit group that was producing snuff medias. Who would have guessed? Snuff, you say? And they never cleaned up the debris either. Now it's just littering the hallway and I have no idea how to get rid of it on my own. Well, very cool about the debris, but what's a snuff milieu? We're talking about, like, Nicolas Cage snuff? It's a Sub Rosa radio station that broadcasts real murders with real victims. Some people pay good money to get off on it. Huh, well, this is a new thing for us. What does she mean to get off on it? I mean, I think that... I think that we know what the meaning is, electrochemistry, but I guess we could ask for specifics. Don't worry, the ICP has a separate division that deals exclusively with unlicensed sub -roses. This isn't our problem. Well, I mean, we've been addressing many things here that are not our problem, so this is just another one. Good luck with that. It's not easy catching those perpetrators. She lets us thought go. I wonder if Kuno knows about these snuff milieus. Seems like it would be up his alley. Did someone here make stuffed animals? I saw a mouse lying around. You mean Mr. Fabron, the taxidermist? No, he mostly just did drugs. But what drugs exactly? I need to know what drugs he was doing for my police report. He got high on some weird taxidermy chemicals. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Eventually, they caused him to lose control of his bladder. The smell was awful. Oh, we're not talking about our regular street drugs. We're talking about the real stuff. These chemicals I'm using for taxidermy. That's but that's my thing. <laughs> even you can probably do better than that. Oh, even electrochemistry is disgusted by that. <laughs> you can almost see it. A small, sickly old man hunched behind his work desk. His pants stained with old piss, stuffing a sad, stiff-legged raccoon dog. The entire scene looks tragic. I found some creepy mannequins. There used to be a fashion atelier here, but I have forgotten the head designer's name. They were doing well for a couple of years, until the insect rights activists came. I didn't know insects had rights, or activists. Yeah, the Attila didn't know it either. They produced a certain collection that used chitin among the materials. Apparently chitin is made in the Occident, where it's extracted from beetle wings. And you know how all kinds of political movements are big in the Occident. The activists shut down the biggest chitin supplier, which of course caused the price to skyrocket. And, naturally, all the most fashionable tastemakers refused to be seen in chitin from then on. The Atelier went bankrupt before they could finish the collection. But insects don't have any brains or feelings. Actually, insects do have brains. But yes, I understand what you're saying. I think the protesters took it a little too far. As she shifts around, you notice several dead flies on the windowsill in front of her. Legs up. They're not moving. Anything else? What's with the rotor blades and skis? They were made by a company called Slipstream. After they pivoted from making rotor blades to skis, 
their chief executive took off on a vacation with all their money. Ah, uh, yes. That kind of vacation. She rests her chin on her hand with an impish smile. Honestly, I think it's quite funny. I think he's still sending out holiday transmissions from Tulula or Tiumotiri or Hashtkor or wherever he is. But, but that's illegal! Running off with company money like that. Why hasn't he been arrested? Sure, it's illegal, but it's not exactly anything extraordinary in business. Besides, Slipstream is history now. All the remaining assets got seized by the bailiffs in 47. I have no idea why those keys and blades are still lying around. I found a strange machine. Fortress Accident, the radio game studio. She closes her eyes as some remnant of a memory lights up her face. She liked them. They were an interesting bunch. We talked about role-playing systems every now and then. Once, I even saw two of them get into fisticuffs over Wiro. They certainly took their work very seriously, even if they seemed to be chronically liberal with their schedules. What do you mean liberal? What happened? The usual. They ran out of money and couldn't get the project done on time. What went wrong? Well, I did hear them talking at times. She looks at the hallway, as if she can still hear them chit-chat behind her curtains on a cigarette break. They seemed to believe they were historical individuals on some grand quest. Well, from what I've seen, the project did look quite impressive. Yes, but when the money started to run out, they just began to complain a lot about capitalism. You know, how the markets are rigged to keep out new businesses and so on. There we go, let's keep it going in that direction. In the end, they just didn't get it done. They didn't have enough willpower to produce something truly historic and to show up to work on time. That's right, they needed to become communist revolutionaries in order for their grand vision to be achieved. It's obvious. She's right. Showing up to work on time is important. Showing up to work on time is hard. No, scratch that. Showing up to work at all is difficult. Especially if you've been drinking. Well, showing up to work on time is incredibly hard. And so is producing something extraordinary. Her eyes wander to the shelves full of die prototypes and discarded models. Something strains her face before she looks up again. Anything else? There's a terrifying taxidermied bear in the cellar. Oh boy, the fabled Revo Show ICT. You're in for a treat here. She smiles and leans closer, hands on her knees, like a stand-up comedian, ready to tell a story. The place was owned by two guys who had some rather innovative ideas about marketing. The bear was one of them. Now ask me about their other ideas. Well, what were their other ideas? There was really just one. And it involved picking out the prettiest girls in the neighborhood and paying them 20 cents per hour to man the booth. And by man the booth, I mean slump behind the counter with a face that could maim you if you ever dared to disturb their bored magazine browsing. She leans back, disapproving. Fritta does the same thing. Well, what did they expect? 20 cents per hour is dog's pay. I'm surprised they showed up to work at all. Oh, but they did. They did show up to work, and not alone. They were also acne-ridden girlfriends and gorilla-like boyfriends loitering near the ice cream stand. And they already had the bear. She closes her eyes as if remembering something painful. What about the bear? The bear. She repeats, pressing thumbs into her temples like trying to suppress a headache. It didn't work out? Of course not. The bear was terrifying. No one wants ice cream guarded by a hostile apex predator. To make matters worse, the fridge didn't work too well either, and half the ice cream came out malformed and partially melted. Eventually, Ravishow Ice City lost the price war to its rival, Glass A 5000. Class A 5,000 saw caramel sundaes for only five cents a piece, out of regular fridges. Mmm, five cent caramel sundaes. I would like one right now. I killed the bear. You did what? 
She rolled her swivel chair an inch closer to you, unsure whether she heard you're right. I had to kill the bear to become the bear. I can see. She nods, eyeing you up and down. The taxidermist who made it said it was his vision beast. He said he met his vision beast while high on desiccants. He called it Megatherion. Megatherion. Now we know the name of our of our enemy that we slayed in combat. Scary, but cool. What's a vision beast? It's an imaginary beast that guides you through life by telling you to do more drugs, mostly. A wise and noble beast guiding you toward the land where the streets are paved with drugs. Speaking of which, we do need to buy that book on that cockatoo. I do drugs. I've got a vision beast myself. Do you? Well... Good luck keeping it under control. Anyway, now you know the story of the fallen ice cream empire. She seems almost sad, finishing the story. The temperature has dropped in the cover of the night. You see frost on the windows. Anything else? Another failed business, perhaps? I've been here for a long time. I found the building's intercom, but it's not working. Oh, right. I hope you didn't try to ring me. I think none of those doorbells work, including mine. I'm still in the middle of connecting the wires. Sorry about the confusion. A strange thing happened when I tried calling a company called Slipstream SCA. Someone answered. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. Are you sure it was Slipstream SCA? Was it a woman? Maybe it was Play Sans from the bookstore. She said she was from Tricentennial Electrics. Tricentennial Electrics? And there's a moment before she recognizes the name. It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? No, it was something else. It was eerie. No, it was something else. Something eerie. Pranks can be eerie. She looks as if she's still convinced it's nothing to be worried about. Oh, the kids these days. We were just one of them, and now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. So, I mean, the the whole thing with the, uh, the doorbell wouldn't be that big of a deal, except that Kim heard it as well, which makes it very different from a lot of the other uh, things we've been experiencing. Are you telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. I was wondering about the whirling and rags. Is it part of the same building complex? You could say so. Both houses were built at the same time and under the East Delta Commerce Center project. That explains why you can call the whirling from the intercom. Albeit, I doubt that anyone responds. If the Whirling is part of the same building, then it's part of the Doom commercial area. The darkness of this place is there, too. I saw a name, East Delta Pinball, on the doorbell. Right. It used to be a gaming arcade. This is an ancient failure, before my time. I'm not surprised, however. My advice? Don't base your business on a fad. Hypnotism, floreography, trick track, especially pinball. Agreed. Pinball is the worst. Well, Kim has strong feelings about pinball. His disdain for pinball could not be clearer. I have a few more questions about the building. Sure, I'm listening. I have a few more, I have more questions about the intercom. I'm pretty sure it still doesn't work, but sure. What do you want to know? No, actually, we don't have more questions about the intercom. Sure, I'm listening. I had other questions. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? All right. That's right. We have to try to pass this shivers check so we can find out why her business has not failed. And maybe if the chat wants to try to give me some help with that. Shivers is a physical attribute. So if we can get another point in fizz... Don't take a point out of psych, please. Uh, int or moat would be fine. 
But let's see if we can get another point into into Fizz. So we can improve our chances a little bit more. Our chances are still pretty good, but we have failed so many pretty good checks. 83. Let's give it a try. A gust of cold air sweeps through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. Hey, Neha. The curse is real, and I figured out why it has spared you. Didn't we already talk about this? She asks as the wind continues to seep in through the cracks of the old chimney. It's because you're not in the same building as the others. This isn't technically the doomed commercial area. What are you talking about? My address is exactly the same. Rue de Sanguelan 10. No, the old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up, yet it has a different address in the heart of the city. No, this used to be a coal plant. You're in the chimney of another building. This doesn't make any sense. She looks out the makeshift, makeshift nest that she has carved out, carved out for herself, bewildered. Are you saying my business was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? Let's say I'm, I have my own methods. Unusual methods. And what? Does it mean that I'm safe from failure? Don't let her become complacent. She still needs to ward her soul against the evil forces. Actually, it's only your workshop that's protected. You should still do something to defend your person. <laughs> she starts laughing, her fingers trying to rub away the exhaustion from her face. What? Do you know what this is? She raises her hand to reveal a piece of metal shining on her index finger. Your lucky charm? Some kind of award? It's a morning ring. I made this when my first company failed. It was a small jewelry shop right here in the east of the commerce center, built with the little I inherited from my parents. I drove it into the ground within a year. I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. See? The curse is real. I bet you didn't run this little jewelry shop from the protective depths of the chimney. No, you're right. I didn't. <laughs> she laughs again, but it sounds rather small and sad. It wasn't just a jewelry shop either. I always thought that it was just the world that you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed. And now you're telling me what? That it was all because I didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an abandoned chimney? Well, I mean, don't call it a dump. You've made it nice and cozy here. Yeah. Or maybe it's the entire world that's cursed. It's such a precarious place. Nothing ever works out the way you want it. That's why people like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be, you can try again. Still, there is something inherently violent even about dice rolls. It's like every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. She picks up a pair of dice from the table and examines them under the light. But anyway, thanks for sharing your theories, officer. We got a new thought. I'm going to check. We'll check out what that is. Well, I'm not going to order a die, at least right now, because I do not have the money. But maybe that's something we might need at some point. We will see. Report. We got to report back to Placence. Confront hardy boys about drug trade. There is that, but that's not what we've been thinking about tonight. Alright, we got Precarious World. Temporary research bonus. All red checks fail for the next four hours. Seems like the point of this game is victory. The absence of defeat on all fronts. Victory in business ventures and creative undertakings. Victory in love and over other people. Political victory. Ideological victory. Hell, even sexual victory. Definitely a lot of object-based victories, too. Having things and not losing them. One problem, though, not a lot of victors in sight. 
everyone's mostly losing. Why is that? And how do you not lose? Well, only one way to find out what this is. And hopefully we don't get any red checks in the next four hours. All right, doesn't seem like there's anything else up here. Let's head back to Plaisant. And see what she has to say about what we've discovered up here. in them. I talked to the entity you told me about. Her name is Neha, and she's a novelty dice maker. A novelty dice maker? Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. No, ma'am. I have felt her aura. She's not the one to blame for this curse. I don't understand. If it's not her, then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? She looks perplexed. Just don't say you don't have any answer yet. The uncertainty is killing her. Well, if she wants an answer, the source is in the taxidermist shop. He became involved in arts darker than taxidermy and brought the void spirits down upon this place. Oh, how horrid! I knew something wasn't right about that place. Tell me, did you find a way to break the curse? Hmm. Well, I mean, she ha she has no way of knowing whether or not the curse is gone or not, so we might as well take credit for it. Yeah, I despooked it. The curse is definitely gone. What does that mean? Are you certain? Oh, but who am I to question your methods? She looks at you with sudden admiration. All that matters is that the energies are retreating. I can already feel the curse lifting. It will be a long time until we're fully free of it, of course. But still, thank you, officer. Truly, you've brought a better psycho emanation to this humble bookstore, and that's no small achievement. We got a lot of experience for that. It will only last a day or two. A week tops. Then... Her mood will sour, and she will feel the curse again. Well, hopefully, the, hopefully our investigation will be over in a week. All right, then. All's well that ends well. Should we return to our ordinary lives? The shop around you feels ancient suddenly, damp and saturated by the coastal air. The books are rotting. A great cold lives here. And there, too. 1,200 meters away, on the urban coast, the dark shape of a church is reflected on the water, calling. I don't know if we can reach that church. Oops, not that. Okay, we've well, we've investigated the cursed area, and we, I think we looked into everything we could look at there, except there's the ice cream maker. We need to be able to open that. Our current pry bar is not good enough. Maybe we can find some better tool uh, to use to pry that open um and then apparently we would find out uh, maybe we'll find another one of those memory cubes in there and uh if we use that who knows maybe we'll find the password and then maybe we could talk to the woman on the radio and i don't even know what that's leading to what is the reason to do any of that i don't know but maybe we'll maybe it's something we'd be able to do um uh, we just need to remember that we still have to do that in there once we find the means to do it. We did get a new thought we are internalizing. I'm curious to know what the result of that will be. Hopefully we don't get any red checks. 
Uh, we do have a point. I'll think about what I want to put the point in. Um, need to think about that. I'm gonna save this game. Oh, and the more most important thing of all, we have 20 real, so we will be able to pay our rent and have somewhere to sleep for tonight. Um, but it, we have not reached the end of day two yet, so there are still people to talk about. So, no, talk about. We have people to talk to. Uh, we can still do some things before it's time to go to bed, but... We'll just end our disco session for right now, uh, knowing that we have succeeded at undoing the curse. We are totally expert power detectives, or at least we've told Plaisance that, and she has no reason to think otherwise. We'll be back with more Disco Elysium. And also, once we get some more money, we need to remember that we should buy a bunch of stuff from this place. I want to get that map. I want to get the book about cockatoos. There's that uh, one book about healing yourself with the pail, I think Inland Empire mentioned. Uh, there's Man from Hyamdal. We gotta know about him. Maybe even a Dick, Bo Dick Mullen book. Who knows? So much literature for us to read in here. We just need more money, because isn't that the way with capitalism? We want to read these books, but we can't unless we have the money. No justice in this world, I tell you. No justice. <laughs>